Uh, let's talk about outliers and influential cases. So why outliers are important? Why we need to identify outliers? Uh, because outliers can influence your results. They can pull the mean away from the median for univariate outliers. And outliers can impact the distributional assumptions. And for example, they can impact the multivariate normality, which, which is one of the assumptions for maximum likelihood, which is the uh, estimation method that we use in SEM. But first, let me tell you uh, what we mean by outliers. There are two types of outliers, univariate outliers and multivariate outliers. Univariate outliers means uh, we, uh, we identify cases that are um, far from other cases from the lens of only one variable. But for multivariate outliers, it's about more than one variable. So one case um, has different behavior uh, from other cases uh, from the lens of more than one variable. Let me show you an example. Here we can see number of respondents in an organization and their salary. So for example, this is the first column is $1,000, $2,000, $3,000, $4,000 per month. And uh, this is $10,000 per month salary. So maybe 10 people, nine people get $1,000 per month. And then maybe 24 people get $2,000 per month. Maybe 38 people get $3,000 per month. And most of the people, I mean, not most, at least the, uh, yeah, the most. Uh, maybe around 49 or 50 cases get uh, $4,000 per month and so on, right? And here maybe two people get $10,000 per month. So this is a distribution of salary in my organization. But suddenly we have one case that gets maybe, I don't know, maybe $20,000 per month. So this is different from the other cases, from the lens of salary, right? So this is a univariate outlier because we just look at that salary. Look at salary. Uh, however, for, uni for multivariate outliers, we uh, identify cases that they have different behavior from the lens of more than one variable. For example, here, job satisfaction, satisfaction and salary. So uh, here we plot job satisfaction against salary. And as you can see, by increasing salary means moving to the right side, job satisfaction is increasing as well. So when I'm moving to the right side, job satisfaction is increasing. So you see um, the, these black spots, uh, easily you can draw a line, a regression line here, and that regression line is the model, right, is our model. So it shows there is a positive relationship between salary and job satisfaction, means more salary, more satisfaction. But there is one case here that though his or her salary is not that high, is among the one which is here in this, I mean maybe, yeah, in this area it's not really high, it's low, uh, but he or she is very satisfied with his or her job. This is an outlier from the lens of job. I don't know why with very low salary, this guy is very, very happy about his job. He's very satisfied about his job or her job. Uh, but anyway, so this can be an outlier. But what is important here? Yeah, we identify the um, outlier cases, but we don't just remove them based on these results. We need to make sure that they are different from the population that you want to study, right? Maybe they have a story, you need to find it. So we don't just blindly remove the cases. Uh, I will tell you more about it. Let me first tell you how to detect, detect univariate outliers. For univariate outliers, this is a way you can use SPSS to identify them. Follow the steps here, click here, then you click on box plot, then you get this window, and then you get this and so on. I, show, I will show you here. So go to graphs and then legacy dialogues and box plot. And first one, the last one should be, by default is like this. By default is like this. Uh, maybe I can reset to show you how it works. Yeah, okay, anyway. So yeah, by default is like this. So you select the first one and the last one, then define. Now here I reset. Then suppose I want to see uh, that you I don't I want to identify the our univariate outliers for subjective norm one, subjective norm two, three, four, five, and I move them to this box and hit OK. 
what you get there are some box plots right so how to interpret these box plots uh, this line shows the mean and 50% of cases should fall within this box for example here a bit their responses should be between 4 to 5.4.5 or 4.6 and 99% of cases should fall within this range from the top from the bottom to top and those cases that falls outside of this range they are potential outliers but we don't just remove them if you remove these cases then you run the test again it will give you new outliers right then you have to keep removing them and then you just notice that oh I remove half of my cases so we don't remove just like that make sure you check the profile check the respondents responses and make sure they are really not people in your population that the population you want to study and in this case for example uh, and those with asterisk yeah you should start with removing those cases uh, but here as you can see num case number 107 has been repeated several times so if i want to remove i start with this case it seems for most of the questions he gave he's an outlier right for example here everyone's response i mean most of the people's response is between three to five and this guy gave 1.5 and here is the same here is the same so if I want to remove, I remove case number 107 because this shows case numbers. So in my SPSS data file, this is case number 107. 107. So if I remove, I want to remove, I remove this case, right? Um, there are other methods to identify outliers like um, the outlier labeling rule. You can follow the steps I have provided here and um, you can also uh, yeah cases in the extreme values table which are out of the above range will be the outliers or you can and you can refer to the references provided here um, so i pass this to you you can google there are so many good uh, materials on the internet about it uh, it's easy to do and um, now how to handle univariate outliers so um, first of all, our main concern here in SEM and maximum likelihood algorithm or uh, estimation method is uh, multivariate outliers, multivariate outliers. But univariate outliers are important too because first of all, maybe they are different from our population. Secondly, they impact multivariate uh, normality, which is the one of the assumptions for SEM, for a maximum likelihood, I mean, for maximum likelihood estimation method in SEM. Uh, they may, may impact your results so um, it's good to identify them but again make sure that they are really outliers don't just blindly remove any case um, that you identify because again uh, it will give you a list of new cases right now how to remove how to identify how to identify multivariate outliers for multivariate outliers we uh, use Mahalanobis d squared, Mahalanobis d squared that is pro measured, that is provided in AMOS software package. So this is the uh, way, this is the, um, this is the analysis properties window in AMOS that we will, I will show you later. Don't worry about it. When you select here test for normality and outliers, you can see I selected it. Then in the results, you get this uh, report observations uh, for uh, outliers multivariate outliers mahalanobis distance and this is the output when you click you get this output um, these are num the case numbers for example case number 758 and later i will show you again it's, it's in amos that how to run this but um, just for your information so these are observation the case the case numbers case number 7 case number 58 and these are Mahalanobis uh, d squared values. So higher means um, they are more deviates from uh, the uh, um, centroid. So uh, we start with remove. If you want to remove, we start with those with the highest values. And there are two columns here. If you want to know more about them, please uh, refer to the materials I have provided. But uh, and you can google also about it but here i refer to p1 so when uh, p1 significant p1 this like any other test means uh, it's significantly 
uh, far from the centroid this means it's an outlier based on the statistical results but like any other test sample size impacts the results so this p-value is influenced by sample size and in SEM usually we have large sample sizes so you may get many significant results so again we don't start with removing them quickly because you are losing information make sure that you are they are outliers and by removing them your model fit increases improves you know and uh, then decide whether you should remove it or not but um, just a rule of thumb for example case number seven uh, the model of the squared value is 39 then fifth case 58 is 23 then 92 is 19 so you see it's some sort of a break even it means it suddenly dropped from 39 to 23 and then to 19 and then after that they are very close 19 to 17 17 to 16 16 15 14 so if i want to remove i consider 7 as an outlier right because it's far from the next case even case 58 okay if you want to remove it but the rest um, be careful and this is I borrowed this from James Gaskin uh, website uh, it was a good example so we tested the model with 340 cases and 295 cases we removed outliers and then we noticed that uh, uh, we checked whether the uh, uh, chi-square value which is an indication of uh, a model fit has improved or not so if you see it really has improved it's an impact on the model fit you may consider removing the cases but again i don't think we need to remove so many right 340 to 295 is a huge i uh, yeah around uh, 45 yeah 45 cases have been removed a lot uh, but yeah sometimes they are really big out i mean they are really outliers and they may impact the results but but after removing as you can see the r square has improved and model fit has improved so anyway so what i'm saying is um, don't just blindly remove the uh, i mean don't just following the results of your te of your test remove the outlet no uh, make sure that they are outliers they are not part of your population they are not the population you want to study and yeah removing outliers is risky because it impacts your generalizability